nobody's been talking about the economic inequality and this economic violence that's happening all over the city all the time until someone lights a cop car on fire and then there's a tension there. I'm proud of what we've done in Baltimore. Um, I don't condone the violence and the destruction of, of property. However, if that's what, it was, that's what it takes to unite and motivate people, then so be it. It's a small, it's a small sacrifice. Mosby, Mosby. I'm not a reformist when it comes to the system. Um, I think you, you can't reform something that is essentially functioning flawlessly for the intentions of how it was supposed to function. We have to move this from a moment to a movement. You know, a lot of us who've been doing activism over the years we have been waiting for this. And I don't mean waiting for this in this, we're waiting for another black man's life to be taken, to be disregarded as worthless. We have been waiting for this country, this city to wake up. The only time you ever really hear about it is when people are actually killed. But there are many people who are harmed by the police regularly, arms broken, ribs broken, nose broke. A lot of people here are homeless for various reasons. My family was homeless from 2007 to 2009. My mom hasn't had a job since probably when I was about eight. It's been a struggle trying to provide for the family, especially when you're the only one working, which would be me. It didn't just happen yesterday or two weeks ago. This has been a question for years now. No what are the systemic issues that result in a young man being murdered? What are the, 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 the issues that result in entire blocks to be abandoned, you know, and neglected? I actually lived in this, this block in this house that you, you know, see behind me. Um, and this is just a quick example of what a lot of Baltimore looks like. The last time I was living here, I was a, a young teen, and the block was full. Every house was occupied. And now, in 2015, every, every house is unoccupied. And it's not just here. It's, the next block is similar. Um, this whole community is, is just ravaged. They took resources um, that was allocated for communities and put them in communities where it wasn't necessarily needed. Uh, a, a new movie theater in, in Harbor East, you know, condominiums. None of that helps us here in this community, you know. Um, we pay taxes. We go to work every day, you know, where there is work. There's a serious problem with unemployment. Um, but city officials don't seem to make our community a priority. Baltimore city officials have closed so many of our schools, firehouses even, um, recreation centers, things that was geared toward children in the community, and closed them down. This moment right now, when the world is paying attention to Baltimore, um, we need to be focused on, focusing on these structural, uh, systemic issues of economic violence against black communities. Over a quarter of Baltimore residents are paying more than half of their income to housing. The foundation of the, of the problems that we think are, are growing. We see about 150,000 cases a year going through Baltimore City Rent Court. That's 150,000 times a year someone's unable to pay their rent. Over 30% of our rental housing in Baltimore is considered uninhabitable. Mm -hmm. It's so substandard. So these are some of the tools, like the Amplify the Voices, that's what we think. Yeah. I grew up in East Baltimore and I remember it was a SK factory around us and people worked at Bethlehem still and it was happier times and then all of a sudden when the big jobs started closing up the steel mill left uh, you have um, companies moving further out there was no way for them to work you know they didn't have nothing to do but stand on corners I was once told if pressure can bend an iron pipe what do you think it does to the mind? When do we want justice? And when do we want it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't just want a house. I want a community. You know, I want a community. When I step outside, there are gardens growing fresh vegetables. You know, there are safe parks for the kids to play in. 
Uh, there are schools just just you go by the school grounds and they're just so vibrant and happy. Can't wait for the bell to ring to get in there. We want our community to be reinvested in, but we want to be at the table. We want to be decision makers so that we can stay. You had gentrification, you had the foreclosure crisis, you had urban renewal, you had redlining, uh, you had uh, mass incarceration. These are all these chronic systemic changes that have hit these communities like over and over and over again. It's pretty, pretty incredible. On the one hand over here and then the one hand over there. Pretty big difference. It's, it's really tough to sit here and not remember the conversations with people, the relations, you know, I've had with people here. My friends, associates, they're all gone. You know, Baltimore, my Baltimore.